Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and I'm getting a ton of questions about bee gnomes. So I wanted to share five different ways that I have used bee gnomes in my decor and tutorials. Here's a compilation and I hope you thoroughly enjoy it. Let's get started. Hi there friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and today I'm making a no so fuzzy bee gnome. Ooh, he's the bee's knees. If you'd like to make him boop, stick around. As always, please hit that like button so I know you're here. And just to let you know, this cutie is 12 inches tall. He's got wings and a honey dripper. He is made with a no sew pattern. It's called the tucked gnome pattern. All right, very popular pattern. We're gonna start out with the pattern. Sheer fabric, floral wire, fur, and fleece in black and yellow. I know it's extremely inspired for a bee gnome, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start out by cutting the two pattern pieces in black and then I'm cutting one inch strips for both the body and the hat. Now we're gonna cut quarter inch strips for the arms if you're using them, but a little bigger for these guys. I'm gonna lay those on top of the hat and the body, making sure I have just a little bit hanging over off of each side. Guess what's coming? You probably guessed it, it's gluing. We're gonna glue these down. I didn't use fabric hot glue, although it does exist. This worked just fine. So I'm just gonna basically tack down these so that the if there are any cuts showing, you kind of tuck those in and turn those down. But it's really, really quick um, to get all these on. And then you can trim it up a little bit, but make sure you still have fold over. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we need it to align. So go ahead and glue those tabs down on one side. Next up, we're gonna do the body. I'm gonna fast forward this so you don't have to watch me do the exact same thing again. Again, just trim those so there's a little hangover. And then we're gonna flip those over on one side just like we did on the other. Now this part's important. Be sure to follow the pattern of where and when. It tells you to hot glue. This is a sort of engineering feet, this little body here. Make sure that glue is set, turn it outside right, and then grab poly beads and poly fill. I'm gonna fill my gnome body about halfway up with poly beads, and that will give it the weight and a very generous portion of poly fill. You want to be able to squeeze it and the body bounces back, drop it, and it stays upright. Okay, now we're going to move on to the hat. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Do cut off the excess fabric up at the top, turn it in outside, right? And then use something not so pointy to get the tip of the hat out. My little piece, I didn't uh, glue those down, so I'm gonna glue those two little pieces down and then I'm gonna hem the hat all the way around. Now it's fleece, so you don't technically need to do this. I just like it when it's kind of finished and looks good. First up, I'm gonna add a little bit of polyfill into the very tip of the hat. Just making sure I like everything and where it is. And then I'm gonna cut my beard and attach that with hot glue. I like to make sure it looks good after it's attached, so I just do the top first. And then when I like everything, I glue the entire beard down. In order to get the place for the nose, I test fit the hat again, split the fur all the way to the fabric backing, and then add my nose. If your noses are falling off in shipping or um, eventually over time, make sure you get to the fabric backing. I doubled over that floral wire and added it all the way up to the tippy top and glued it to the back seam. And then I stuffed the rest of the hat. It is a very poofy hat. I thought it was really cute, but the wire allows us to make those little cute little bends. Okay, so as you can imagine, we're just gonna tack down this hat over the nose and in the very back in the center. Okay, so if you aren't using arms, you can actually glue the entire hat down, but I'm gonna make arms for my little guy after I do everything else. So for the wings, I'm going to make them very similar to the mini kissing farmhouse, or I'm sorry, mini kissing bee gnomes, I'm going to create a large loop and a small loop, join those together, wrap the wire a considerable amount so that we never have it undo, and then I'm gonna repeat that. 
Next up, I'm gonna join those two together by taking the ends of their pieces and twisting those within an inch of their inanimate life. I just wanted to make sure they don't come undone. So I'm gonna lay that down on a piece of wax paper and then put my sheer fabric down, put the wings on top and glue into the each of the loops. So we're just adding glue. And if a little glue comes out like it did on the top right there, don't worry. Look at that. So you do wanna let it dry for just a second. You can see I picked it up without it coming apart, but I do want you to know, you have to press down another piece of shimmer fabric. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make them look really finished. Cause you can see both the outsides and insides when they're this big. If it's not um, sticking, just take the tip of your hot glue gun, warm up the glue that's there or add a thin layer of hot glue. Once that's all dry, you just snip, snip, snip. You just cut out all the way around your wings, even the little hot glue that might have escaped. And the last step for these is just to clip that extra bit of wire off. Now, if you are shipping these or uh, selling, I would 100% recommend that you add stitches. By the way, this pattern is available for commercial use. You have to buy the license, but it's a fun pattern to make. All right, so I'm making the arms now, so I measured um, how long I needed those to be and how wide I wanted them to be. I doubled it, and I'm just adding one quarter inch strips that are mostly, I mean, they're not even, okay? But I figure in nature, a B isn't even, probably is. There's some magical formula, probably. But I just doubled over some floral wire, and then I'm doing the exact same thing I did with everything else. And I'm just aligning the little yellow pieces little bit different here in that we're not going to flip this outside right so we're doing wrong sides together for the arms and then just lining up the edges of our yellows because i wanted him to hold it honey dripper i loaded a really cheap uh, hot glue gun with yellow hot glue and made honey drippers i stuffed them in a piece of floral foam to dry while i attached the arms to attach those, we're just gonna tuck them up, make sure they're even, you can pin them in place. And then we're gonna do arm to body glue first and then hat to arm glue second. And the reason is, is because they just move around a lot and if you wanna keep them even, that's my tip. Next up, I just added little wood beads for hands, bent the arm, added hot glue to the top of his arm and attached the honey dripper dropper. I have no idea what that's called. If you know what it's called, or would like to tell me what you think of this, just add a comment below. I really appreciate you being here. Go ahead and watch another video. I've got tons. As always, thanks again. Like and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots, and today we are making this traditional, very elegant and tall sewn bee gnome. If you would like to make him, boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. And hey, speaking of crafting, have you joined the Facebook group? I'll put that link down below. You can see fun things like this and so much more. All right, speaking of this guy, he is made 14 inches tall with a very popular cozy gnome sewing pattern. It's easy to stitch together and it's great if you're shipping. All right, so this is coordinating cottons. I ended up using Mongolian fur for an elegant look and I'm just gonna cut my pattern pieces. If you're using arms, you want this look in particular, do cut out your arm pieces as well. All right, so we're gonna put both sides, or right sides together of the body piece, leaving room for our turn. And then we're just gonna put the pins on the hem. If you are using a trim, you can skip this part, but I went ahead and hemmed just a quarter of an inch of my cotton fabric on the hat base before putting right sides together, pinning it and sewing up the hat. Be sure to start and stop your stitches every time, just to make sure if you're new to sewing. Go ahead and then sew up the body and attach the base piece all around in a circle. It's really simple. It doesn't maybe sound simple, but I promise it is. If you need help, let me know in the comments below. Once you have everything sewn up, just go ahead and turn it outside right using a skewer or a pencil to help you poke out the tip of the body and hat. 
Another tip is to roll the seam of the base of the body in between your fingers to make sure it sits flat before moving on. Speaking of moving on, we're gonna go ahead and trim our threads and then fill our body. Do use non-food products if you can and use about a minimum of a cup just to make sure when you try and push it over that it doesn't fall over. Next up, use a generous portion of polyfill. If you want a bendable hat, which I do, uh, go ahead and get your floral wire ready. You're gonna need a piece that goes all the way from the base of the body to the tip of the uh, top. Now, I'm using a very thin floral wire that I had to double over because I didn't wanna go to the craft store. I'm trying to use my stash. And then I bent both ends over so that it doesn't poke through our fabric. I'm gonna finish stuffing up the very tip of the cone and our opening. You can lay it on the table, sometimes that helps. So we're gonna be closing this guy up. Do pull up the fabric and just make sure it's all sleek and finished. You have two choices here. You can either glue this opening closed or you can sew it closed. If you're gluing, do use hot glue and try and make sure you get a nice seal. I sew it by hand. I figure if I have the sewing machine out, I should continue sewing. And it takes me about a minute and a half to sew up this opening. So I'm gonna skip through that real quick. <laughs> so you don't have to watch me sew poorly. All right, I do double knot it and then stick the needle and thread straight through the body, pull tightly and cut it off so it disappears inside. Roll it in between my hand to even everything out, bend the wire, make sure it works, and then slip on the hat all the way to the top. It's gonna give us a good idea of how much beard to cut. This is a personal choice, but I wanted a very long, very, very robust beard. I ended up going with the Mongolian, brushing it out and cutting a just a large rectangle. It's gonna give us the ability to see just a little bit of the yellow, and it's gonna give us the ability to make a wraparound beard while still having enough room for our wings. I'm gonna attach the very top and only the very top. So if you want to do the method where you cut through the beard for the arms, don't glue anything else down just yet. Slip on the hat and get an idea of where you want your nose to be. You can use clay beads that you make out of polymer clay. You can use wood beads. You can use pantyhose stuffed with stuffing, anything you'd like. Just make sure that it fits up under that hat. You like the size. Make sure to put the hot glue all the way to that fabric backing and not on the fur, and then glue down the tip of the hat just on the nose. Here I am just cutting, pinning, and turning, or sewing and turning my arms because I now want to use them. <laughs> Now, I chose to make my arms bendable, uh, so you may keep your floral wire out for that. This is plush fur. Now, no matter what way you cut it, it's going to go everywhere, but it elevates absolutely every design. Fabric stores have this, Joann's will have this. It's plush fur, it's very small, but ooh, it makes a big impact. So I'm gonna stuff a little bit of polyfill up into these arms using a bamboo skewer, and then I'm gonna go grab a little bit of floral wire. I'm gonna press it about an inch past the edge of the arm, and then I'm going to finish my stuffing before attaching this gorgeous fur trim. To do that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue and then glue it all the way around. And I am going to trim it after adding my hand. And for your hand, again, you can use anything that you would like, felt balls, wool, um, beads, uh, rounds, whatever you'd like. But I do end up trimming it here because I want to make sure you can see that little bead. All right, so this part is really fun. It's a really fun technique. Um, go ahead and limp roll everything. It's so messy. So you may think to yourself, wow, those are some really long arms, Sarah. And I would say, why well, yes, they are. So make them long, pin them, and you'll see why we need them to be so very long. This is a tall fella. So what we wanna do is we want to make a cut directly through the backing of the faux fur, go in through the front, nope, 
the front there you go Sarah and we weave that arm all the way through that hole and then up under the back of the hat so we have not glued any of that down right we've only glued the very top of that beard so we have a good portion to work with up in here all I'm doing here is just making sure I kind of twisted it so I'm just gonna make sure it's flat so it sits the fabric sits flat underneath the beard you can see brushing it out it just looks so so nice we're gonna repeat this on this other side exact same steps and tuck it up under the hat make sure they're even and we're gonna glue those down so a tip is always glue the arm to the body first and then everything on top whether it's a hat or whether it's like this the beard so we're going to make sure the beard covers all the way over that arm so again the back of our gnome needs to look nice because we're going to have those fabulous wings all right so i'm just cutting the piece here making sure i have the right size setting it aside and moving on to the wings now if you're not new here i've shared three bees at this point this year and this is the easiest way i've found to make wings use floral wire shape your wings now you can shape them with the two large ones at the top and one piece of floral wire two small ones one big one small that part doesn't matter you just want to make sure that you have a nice big join section in the middle when you put everything together that's going to give us a nice base to attach our wings so I'm just using some pliers and just shaping rough shapes at this point and I'm going to attach these two pieces together again quite a generous piece in the middle and then I'm gonna get a piece of wax paper and lay it down. I'm gonna get some shimmer fabric, or you can use sheer fabric. I've used curtains before for wings, whatever. So we're gonna lay the wax paper, then the sheer fabric, then our wire on top, and just fill each cavity with hot glue. You're gonna do this for all four cavities, and if any hot glue seeps through, don't worry. We'll get that in just a moment. Now you're gonna let this set for just a, just a couple i don't even know if it's a minute but basically you want to make sure that it's not moving around what you're going to do is you're going to press another piece of shimmer fabric onto the top of this one if it doesn't fit ex or if it doesn't stick exactly grab your hot glue gun warm up the glue or add a little bit of hot glue where it's just not sticking once it's set completely you're just going to cut around the whole thing and then it's time to attach them right at the base of the hat. Be sure to add some stitches if you're shipping these. We wanna make sure they don't go anywhere. And then we're gonna attach our flower and look, he's all done. What do you think of this tall drink of Scandinavian splendor? As always, I appreciate you being here. Let me know what you think of this guy. If you're new, I have a ton of playlists of gnome crafts for you. As always, please like and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots, and today I'm sharing either a sewn or a hot glue tiered tray gnome. Look at him. He's got those little shoes. If you'd like to make him, boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here. Turn on those notifications as well. For those of you who love this pattern, I do too. It's the Icelandic Lovey pattern. It is a perfect tiered tray size gnome for top or bottom tiers. We have a lot of stuff in the pattern and I'm gonna only use part of it today. I am using flannel for my hat and body and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hem the bottom of the hat so that I don't get any fraying and all I'm going to do is just flip up that bottom all the way from the left to the right even along those curves about a quarter of an inch. So for those of you who are hot gluing you can clip or pin and for those of you who are sewing you can clip or pin. I'm just using pins here because I had them on my table. I'm going to speed this part up so you don't have to watch all of that, but basically there's going to be a little part on the curve. If you're new to doing that, don't worry, overlap the curved pieces, okay? It will all be flat after you sew it. So speaking of sewing, we are going to sew right along the edge of that one quarter inch. If you are sewing this, go ahead and line that up with a one quarter inch marker on your sewing machine right near the foot or the presser foot. 
And if you don't have that, I do recommend putting a little piece of tape right on your sewing machine so you can be sure to keep that straight. This is going to be seen on the other side, so I just wanna you know, remind you that if you're sewing, use a coordinating color thread. You don't have to use white like I'm using. I just use that so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see here, now we are all ready to follow the pattern exactly. We're gonna snip off any of our threads. We're gonna put right sides together. So for those of you hot gluing, you're just going to glue up exactly where I'm pinning right now, which is the entire open back. And you can see this pattern is so cool because the body and the hat have this cool slope to it. All right, so for the body piece, whether you're gluing or you're sewing, you're just going to use the same one quarter inch seam allowance. For those of you gluing, I do recommend using a detailed tip glue gun on projects this small. If all you have is a regular tip glue gun, don't worry, just be very light on the glue application. When you get to the base of the body, you're going to line up the two pieces. I like to anchor one, fold each of the two pieces in half and match up right where they crease. Now, for this body pattern, you can pin it or clip it all the way around, doesn't matter, but be sure to tuck the base inside. You can mushroom it out, but I just think it's a little easier, especially if you're brand new to putting patterns together. It's a little easier to tuck that base inward and then pin those edges all the way around. So you can see I can mushroom it out or just tuck it inside. Now, if you are new, don't worry. This pattern, you've cut it correctly. All of the bases are sized exactly per the style of the, the body that we want. And so you may have to play with it in order to roll out those creases, but just move it between your fingers. I promise you it will be perfectly flat all the way around. So you can see here. So you take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna use again the one quarter inch seam allowance. You can also put this where the body is facing up. That is your personal preference. I like to do it this way because I can move the body out of the way, making sure to do two things. Number one, I check that my seam is still one quarter inch all the way around. And number two, I can see the two levels to make sure, or the layers to make sure that they both are getting caught in those stitches. Speaking of getting caught in the stitches, we want to make sure that everything, we can pull on it and it's fine whether you're hot gluing or sewing. Turn everything right side out and if you are using the pattern's dart system, just dart it at this point right here and it explains that in the pattern and I've shown it in other videos. I'm going to put a playlist at the end of this for the Icelandic gnome pattern so you can see all the gnomes I've made with this so far. I do recommend snipping your seams on anything like that's going to have a larger seam. So I use uh, pinking shears to do that. If you want, you can just use regular scissors. It's no big deal. Just make sure you don't cut through your sewing stitches or through the glue. For the shoes, if you are brand new to sewing, do not attempt these shoes. They're very, very small and it's kind of frustrating. Uh, but you can also use the Dollar Tree booties, cover them in felt, make the bottom match your hat. So I'm using felt here with the mat matching pattern for the hat, just for the little bottom pieces. Um, so I just made two of the legs that come with it and it's, I'm gonna turn them into booties. Okay, so now we're to the assembly part. So I'm using poly pellets, non-odor, non-moisture, poly fill, beard, our pattern pieces, two shoes, and something for a nose. I'm gonna start by putting just a half a cup of weight in here. If you do use food products like beans or something larger like gravel, just make sure you don't add more of your weight past the opening, okay? And then you're just going to be sure to tuck up polyfill all the way up into the tip and then around your um, base so that you can get it nice and smooth. Now for those of you who are new to this pattern, you can do two ways. Number one, you can put a wire in it. And number two, you can go without a wire. It's 100% up to you. I'm gonna show you the wire. This is just thin floral wire. There's nothing special about it, but because it is so thin, we actually want to double it up. And so I'm just going to round off both ends. You can see I have two round ends. I'm gonna stick one all the way down and I'm going to flatten the rounded part. And then I'm gonna take the other rounded part all the way up to the very tip. And then I'm going to put it in the channel 
So you can see I actually put it inside this little channel and then glue it down over that wire. Why we do that is because it will not move. After people move it, the body and the hat around and all of the gnomes, the wires will detach and move around in the body. By securing it in the channel, we won't have that. You can either glue or sew up this opening in the back. I'm going to glue mine because my hat is going to be affixed. If you do make reversible hats, I've shown that this hat, this pattern has a reversible hat instruction as well. You can make all season hats if you want for this and they're really great. Like I said, for tiered trays or small items, they're great for shipping too because they're really small and light. I just measured my faux fur. I'm using white Mongolian faux fur. This is a long two and a half to three inch pile. And then I'm just going to make a rounded U shape with a nice little half inch drop. And that's gonna give me a very fluffy, very full beard. So I'm just making sure my drops are the same size. And now I'm just gonna make sure all the pile is pointing down and I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut only the fur backing. You can see there's no transfer when you cut only the fur backing. So I'm just gonna cut it all the way across. Do be careful, because X-Acto knives are sharp. But you see that cutting mat underneath? That's only for liability reasons. You actually will never cut that far. I like to give the beard a quick brushing before pinning it in place, just to get an idea of where everything is going to go. I am going to now actually put this aside and get my shoes. So the pattern actually makes it long enough where you can make full legs sticking out uh, in front, or you can wait and put a piece of styrofoam in the body to make it stand on dowel legs. But for me, I'm actually just wanting little booties that are really close to the body. Again, if you don't sew or if you're new to sewing, you can use the plastic Dollar Tree booties for this. These are about the same size just a different shape. Now you see that white, I used white thread so you could see what I was doing, but I'm gonna just color it with a black Sharpie marker so no one's going to see. Once I get those stuffed, I do make sure they're about the right same, well, size and then I dance with them because I can't help myself. All right, so because I don't want a ton of extra fabric, I'm just gonna cut off about a half inch from these and then I'm going to actually tuck everything in. So I'm going to glue it down in, on the edges and then I'm going to tuck it into itself and then glue that to the body. I find that that is the most secure because you have a lot of solid area in which to glue. Now for those who love hand sewing, you can absolutely sew these to the body. You can. I'm not going to stop. No one's going to stop you. I'm just really lazy. And so I don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to start assembly. You're almost done with this, guys. Really quick to put together. It's so, so sweet. So I'm just going to glue on the beard. Again, you can sew that on if you would like to torture yourself with that much hand sewing. I'm sorry, I find it torturous uh, to sew everything on by hand. Unless I'm making like a really big quality piece, I'm going to glue it. So here, if you're new to adding noses onto fur, you're going to split the fur to its fabric backing and that is where you're going to put the dollop of hot glue in order to press on your nose. Your nose can be a wood round like I'm using, it can be a bead, it can be a pom-pom, it can be nylon stuffed with polyfill. There's no limit to what you can do. Once I get all that on, I'm actually going to now roll down the top of my little booties and then I'm going to press the tops in so it creates a nice big tabletop of fabric that I can glue to. So one side goes down, other side goes right next to it, and then the back gets tucked in. So now it's all flat and I can glue it directly to the body um, after I do the second one. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to make sure the beard is out of the way because that's one thing, if you get hot glue in the beard, it's best just to cut it out. And you can see me putting a very generous amount of hot glue on this, move the beard out of the way and line them up on either side of the nose. And you can kind of see that bend in the back. I, it's hard to see from up top, but oh, I love it. All right, so you can see right here, I have these white threads showing through. Here's my big trick for that. <laughs> yeah, that's just a Sharpie. All right, so I'm gonna slip on the hat. You can glue it down or you can use the reversible method. You can use the interchangeable method. But let me know down below in the comment section, what do you think? I'm also gonna put the pattern link down below and here is an Icelandic lovey 
playlist for inspiration. Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffles-and-rainboots.com and today I got lost in my craft room and made a mini bee gnome. He's cute. If you'd like to make him, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. I'm going to show you the front, the back, the sides, everything. This was something I started to clean my craft room and got lost because I found those. <laughs> I love the little bounce. They really bounce. Okay, so this is a stash brusher. I'm using a K-cup. I'll give you some options. Five inches of a wrapping paper inside roll here. There you go. I'm going to use uh, the hearts here. They're like little wooden hearts for the base and the wings. To uh, weight it, I'm going to use Dollar Tree Vase Filler. There are these little rocks. You can use anything you have on hand. To cover the uh, wrapping paper roll, I'm going to use this black velvet. Uh, fabric, some scraps of faux fur, a little wood bead for a nose, and then for the bees, I'm actually going to use a floral wire to create a spring, black paint, twine, and these adorable little foam and felt bees. I got these on Amazon almost a year ago, and I've used them on other sites, but not Ruffles and Rain Boots, so I'm going to put that link for those down below. To get started, I'm using a cake cup here because I had it from my morning coffee and I hate recycling things if I can use them. So I just used a little black acrylic paint, painted the inside brim just at the bottom and then the entire uh, cake cup black. If you don't have a cake cup, you can create this hat using a paper roll. You can create it using cardstock and you can also create it using the little metal pails you get at the Dollar Tree in the party favor section. Once that was all painted, not very well because it's again just in case the twine shows through, I dried it using my heat gun and then I'm going to set that aside for just a second while we work on the base and the body. This is 100% optional. I just kind of wanted to see if I could. Again, I'm supposed to be cleaning, so if I can delay that in any way, I'm gonna. So after I got the hot glue off the end of my pencil, I'm going to just put the body on and then trace that arc to see if I can score these little wooden hearts and then break it off successfully. I wanted to see because I have another project in mind, I'm just using a ceramic finger knife. This is from Fiskars. I got it at Joann's and it's surprisingly did a really good job, but I'm pretty sure you could just cut this with scissors too. You may have to cut it at little angles, but either way I got out the sanding block. So scissors, knife, doesn't matter. Just make sure it's not going to give you a splinter because I tend to do that to myself. So this fabric is a black four-way stretch crushed velvet. It's the worst fabric I've ever bought in my entire life. It's so hard to work with. So I figure it's been in my craft stash for eight years because I bought it for a little princess on a dress-up dress for my daughter when she was two. I made her an entire set of dress-up dresses. They were featured by Parents Magazine, in fact. Uh, but this fabric had literally has been in my craft room since that day day. So I figure I'm going to use it up as best I can and I'm just going to spread out some glue on that paper roll and then roll it around and it's stretching and it's warping because that's the nature of the fabric but it worked out really well. I like when you're using a velvet or a crushed velvet because it captures the light and makes it look iridescent even though it's black. I did end up using a little bit extra fabric so that I can create a faux hem and then glue that down. On each of the ends, I just cut it into tabs and then glued each of those tabs down. No idea why I did the top because literally no one is ever going to see that. But again, I need to waste time so I don't have to clean my craft room. I had a little bit of hot glue strings on it. So all I did was hit it with a heat gun and biggity bam, they disappear. See, now they're all gone. All right, setting that all aside, we're going to get to the best and worst part of this little craft. So all I'm going to do is starting on the inside brim, I'm going to place a little string of twine here. This is the Dollar Tree twine, and I'm just going to layer it over and over and over, starting on the inside and going all the way uh, around. This is the longest part of this project. It took me 15 minutes. I listen to audible books when I craft. Oh, 
somebody in the Facebook group and then a whole bunch of people said that they watch TV while they craft in their craft rooms. I would literally cut a finger off if I tried to do that. So I wanted to ask you all, do you craft with the TV on? And if so, how do you, how do you keep all your digits? All right, so I, I, when I got to the top, I just rolled up a little piece of, of aluminum foil and then glued that directly on top. Because it was so shiny, I took a scrap of that fabric that had fallen on my floor and cut a piece to cover up so the shine wouldn't come through. And then I just continued the twine all the way up and made a nice little mound for it. See? So if you have been on rufflesandrainboots.com, you know I love making beehives out of the Dollar Tree gardening pots and their rope. Such a fun craft. You can use it outside and inside. So go check those out if you, if you want like a cute spring display. I hit it with the heat gun to make sure I didn't have any glue strings. And then I cut an oval from black felt to make my opening. Now to make the round, uh, like the buildup, I just put a little twine and then looped it around the outside, securing it all the way around, and then repeated that, stacking the twine on itself about four times, and then securing that end, um, like kind of around the edge, so you didn't see it. This is a lot easier with large rope, but this, like I said, this whole entire part took 15 minutes. All right, so once that is done, I end up hitting it with the heat gun again just because my craft room is cold. I didn't turn on the um, little, I, I have a little space heater that warms me to the, <laughs> to the bones and I didn't turn it on. All right, so I'm going to do the unthinkable and hack off half of this little bee so that I can put him in the opening. Now, uh, yeah, he looks gargantuan compared to the opening, which I didn't think about until I put him in. But it's, you know, it is what it is and I still love it. So I put that little fabric scrap of fur when I test fit the hat to know where I put it. I just want it right up under the hat. And then for the wooden bead nose, I split the fur to its fabric backing and added a piece or a generous portion of hot glue. I'm going to point the opening of the bead out and up so that I can hide it under the hat and you can't see the bottom uh, hole opening. I added hot glue both to the inside of the hat, to the top of the nose, and the body, and that way I could make sure I had a nice secure join. I also glued the back on just a little bit to make sure I had um, it on securely. For the inside weight, I'm just going to add hot glue around the inside on the cardboard part, not on the fabric, and then I'm just going to place these little rocks on it. That's it. I didn't want it to be full. You don't need it to be heavy. You just need it to have a little more bottom weight. Because I cut off the back of that heart, I needed to add a little weight. Put some hot glue on the inside and then pop that onto your little heart. So just so you know, I was going to keep the natural wood color of the beet and the wings that we're going to make in just a second but because I have a dark wood tiered tray I ended up painting both of those to have a more vibrant contrast um, but I really do like the natural wood look um, and may make another one all right so once that's on there I'm going to set it aside so it secures I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to the edge top edge of one heart and then place the other side edge of one right on top of that and it creates a cute little set of wings while that is setting I'm going to end up painting this base black again I did that to have a bit of a contrast on the wings for my tiered tray but you can leave them natural it's very farmhouse rustic with the natural wood while that is drying, I'm going to wrap the floral wire around a pencil so I get a nice little spring. And then I'm going to add a little length at the bottom so that I can tuck this and secure it up under sort of the side of the hat right here. I did tape my little fur out of the way when I was painting the base, just FYI. For the, to make it secure, because I knew I was gonna bunk this thing every time I walked by. I added a little hot glue to the end of the wire and then pressed it into the bee. So it's a felt outside but foam inside so it works really well. I am going to paint the wings all over with white chalk paint and before it dries I'm going to take everyone's favorite, favorite craft supply glitter and I'm just going to add a little sparkle 
because I'm extra. But because I despise finding glitter everywhere, I am also going to take Mod Podge and secure that glitter in place. I did two coats of Mod Podge to make sure it stayed. Hit it with a hot glue gun and then add a hot glue at the, or hit it with the heat gun <laughs> and then added hot glue to the very top and the back so that I could secure it not only to the body, but also to the underside of the hat, making it rock solid. And here you are. What do you think of this little bee scrap busting gnome? That's my favorite part. As always, thank you so much for being here. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi there friends, it's Sarah with Ruffles and Rain Boots and we're making these adorable bee gnomes. They're kissing, boop, and they're adorable. If you'd like to make them, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. Now, these are just a few inches tall. They're perfect for tiered trays. They lock together, they move together, and look at those wings, y'all. We're gonna make those wings. All right, so this is part of the Magnetic Kissing Gnome pattern. I have four already made that I'm sharing with you, and I have ideas for so many more. They're adorable. For supplies, you're gonna need everything called out in the pattern. I'm using cotton fabrics, faux fur, magnets for noses, pantyhose fill and I use poly beads for weight. For the wings you're going to need thin floral wire and a shimmer fabric. And we're just going to get started here with the pattern whether you sew or you use a hot glue gun you're going to definitely need to cut out four body pieces. Easy peasy. The only tricky part of this pattern is the very hook like the very tip of the body and hat which is this hook. Use a fine tip glue gun and you're a-okay. There you go, you're just gonna do that. Now you will have to make sure that you take note of what not to glue in the pattern. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these hooks out first. So after you get the first one done, be sure to do the second so that they both set. Go back to the first and turn just that hook. I know this is kind of tricky to explain, so I'm not gonna edit much of this out. All I'm gonna show you is I'm pulling the two pieces back, and then I'm going to stick a bamboo skewer so that I can poke out the very tip. I do roll it between my fingers, and I use this skewer to sort of make sure I pop out the very tip of that. I'll show you in a minute what happens if you accidentally bust through a seam. So if that is a concern for you with hot glue, don't worry, I make the mistakes and show you how to fix them. <laughs> All right, so now that you have it poked out, we're gonna put right sides together again, tuck that hook inside. Be sure to follow the pattern and leave a portion open that we indicated. Don't do it anywhere else. This pattern has been tested many, many times and I assure you, this is the easy way. All right, so we're just gonna finish gluing this up, making sure to leave the bottom open like we've uh, identified out there and then we're just going to repeat it for the second gnome so that each of these can set. All right so here you go I'm going to show you I accidentally poked right through and so I'm going to tuck in the uh, fabric then I'm going to glue it then I'm going to squeeze it together and cut off the glue that comes out the end right super easy once you have the bodies there we're going to make sure that they set okay because we don't want any shifting in the hot glue so then you can cut out your base pieces and please note they don't fit they don't fit on purpose <laughs> again we try to make this really easy for you i'll give you a tip after making i don't know eight or ten of these so far uh start with both edges of like the two ends the two tips and then secure everything else you're going to be pulling out the body onto the base and then you're going to repeat for the second gnome cut off the excess and then turn them inside out no right side out so you can see here it's small but it's totally doable and repeat all right so now we're going oh, there we go now we're going to fill a little bit of polyfill i don't use food products in my gnomes if you do please disclose all right, I'm gonna add a little polyfill to the base only. I'm gonna raid my daughter's pipe cleaner stash. And I'm going to use these chenille stems to give the structure to the body. So you can do this with stuffing, but I'll just tell you it's way easier when you have a thick chenille stem in there all the way on the very tip. All right, so now I'm just gonna finish stuffing 
the body. All right. And then we're gonna secure it closed just with hot glue. So I'm gonna zoom in here and show you. I'm tucking the edges of the fabric in. I'm adding a little hot glue. And then I'm gonna squeeze them together. You can use your little hot glue fingertip protectors. I don't know why I didn't, because um, I did burn myself. So then you're just gonna squeeze that shut. If any glue comes out, just snip it off. Repeat that for the second gnome, and then we're going to make sure you're cutting your hat per your pattern. See how I moved that one there so I could get the two Bs? Cs. All right, so I'm cutting uh, four hat pieces, two of which have to be swapped. Oh, there you go, swapped. And so again, I wanna make sure that I get the part of the pattern that I want. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing we just did in the body. Super easy once you get the hang of it. I don't know why I feel the need to sing on voiceovers. I apologize. That's not my strong suit. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna glue the uh, tip of the hook. There you go. Repeat it for the second one so that they can dry and set and then flip out just the hook again. There you go. Get that skewer. This is way easier to pop out because the, the hat is a little whiter. And then you're gonna glue this, but not all the way down because this is cotton. So we're going to make sure that we can create a hem at the bottom. So just be sure to follow the pattern. And I mean, it's super easy. Like I said, I spend a lot of time developing these uh, so that we can all make them instead of warring with them, trying to reinvent the wheel, right? So we're gonna just repeat that for the second hat, turn them both inside out, nope, right sides out. And then we're just gonna stick it all the way on. So you're just gonna thread the tip of the body into the tip of the hat and play. <laughs> no, just kidding. If you need to learn how to cut faux fur, I do give you a beard size in the pattern and I do have a video for cutting faux fur. So you're just gonna make sure, please pay attention to where this calls out in the pattern because the where we put the noses is super important. Now I am gonna show you how to hot glue these noses together, but if you have a needle and thread, sew a running stitch around a circle of the pantyhose, stuff in your polyfill and magnet and cinch it closed. You can do that even if you're using the hot glue method instead of the sewing method for these uh, adorable little gnomies. Just do that for the note if you want, it's really easy. But you guys always ask me for hot glue instead of sew, so here you go. And then what you're gonna do is make sure, um, we talk about where to place this nose in the pattern, make sure it's there and then glue that on and you can scooch down the hat again, glue the tip of the inside of the hat to the top of the nose, there you go. And then pull the back down and secure the back of the hat because we are going to secure our wings to that. For the girl, I just made two little ponytails because this fur was not braidable. See how wild it is? So wild. She has wind-blown hair. She's a bee gnome. <laughs> I really should script this stuff out because otherwise stuff like that just comes out of my mouth. All right, so I'm just cutting out any excess here so that this sits as flat as possible against the body. Again, you do have a little give in the nose or in the hat area for the nose, so it should slide right in. Once you have it positioned, always check it against the other one you've made, and that way to make sure that those do come together. The body is made a particular way so that this can happen, and they still look cute. All right, so now we're going to attach our ponytails and secure down the back of that hat. Hey, guess what? It's the really, really fun part. Let's make some bee wings. So I'm gonna show you the shape here it is, two large wings on top, two small wings on bottom, and a sizable little part that we've sort of looped around itself for the center. That's going to be how we attach it securely. All right, so I'm just bending this thin floral wire. Again, I'm squishing down that center with the pliers so that I can be sure to have a nice attachment place. And then I'm just gonna place this on top, flat, on top of a shimmery fabric. And you can buy this in scraps, by the way. There's always scraps of this, like at the craft stores. So here you can see, I'm just gonna take hot glue and fill each of these sections up. 
I'm not kidding. Isn't that adorable? It's so easy. I've not seen this done before. And so I, like I said, I try and innovate and bring you new ways to do things that are super easy. All right, so once you've repeated this, we're going to cut it out. Use smaller scissors. I had to go back through this a couple times to make sure I got close to the wire. Then I'm just gonna squish the two sides together so it looks like this and attach them. Now, if you are selling these, I highly recommend you add a couple of stitches on for this because people are gonna wanna play with the wings, right? Cause look at them, they're super cute. <laughs> What do you think of this pattern? What do you think of these bean gnomes? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you being here with me. This is the funnest job I've ever had. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun. And that is it for me today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. I sincerely appreciate you being here today. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty and creative fun.